Oh, Jamie, it's so wonderful to have you here back home in Lacoste. We didn't meet here, though. We met in Savannah. We met in Savannah first. Yes. Yes. A decade ago? Is that amazing? So we've been friends a long time. Tell me a little bit about your love affair with the Lubron. So I came here because of you, initially. (laughs) Uh, I was a commercial photographer in Manhattan, and I did a project with SCAD and came here. And then the first morning there, sunrise, I opened the shutters and I looked down and it was vineyards, sunflower fields, and lavender fields. And I was just like, what is this world I'm in? (laughs) And of course the architecture is thousands of years old and Mm -hmm. you walk across a bridge the Romans built and it was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. And the light was so beautiful. And everywhere we went to photograph, it just kind of kept unfolding itself in front of me and it really bewitched me Mm -hmm. and I couldn't shake it. I was very accustomed to some of the most beautiful locations in the world. It was my job to go to these places and photograph them. But there was something about here that just got into my soul, you know, it just haunted me and I had to come back. And the layers of the experience of living here, so you've included so much of that Mm. because, I mean, this book, it's kind of hard to categorize because it's a memoir, it's, you offer tutorials, cookbook, tips, there's a lot in this book. When we first put together the proposal to do the book, the editors were all like, but where does it go on the bookshelf? Where does it go on the bookshelf? And then Mm -hmm. eventually they were like, you know what, it's a new world, Forget the rules, you know, let it just be whatever it's going to be. Would they consider this book lifestyle? Because it's really you and many aspects of your life. They leave it very uncategorized, to be honest. (laughs) I mean, so depending on the day, they'll call it a photography book. The other Mm -hmm. day, it's a memoir. The other day, it's a cookbook. It really Mm -hmm. really just depends. It kind of floats Mm -hmm. the gamut. Mm -hmm. But that's our life. Our lives are are messy. They're full. We we eat, we cook, we travel, we We have children. We have children. (laughs) I write about that process, you know. (laughs) And we have cultural differences and things that we learn and share. It's not just Mm -hmm. taking pretty photographs. So Mm -hmm. our life is all-encompassing, and the book is about that. You have this kind of romantic aura. Mm -hmm. about yourself and your life and your photography. Where does that come from? I never really lived in reality. Mm -hmm. I've always sort of lived in a fairy tale in my mind, even when I was a (laughs) child. I didn't really like playing with other kids because I wanted to live in my mind. So I would play by myself and I would play with dolls and create these whole universes. Mm -hmm. And when my mother showed me her camera when I was about 13, Mm -hmm. when I looked through that viewfinder, I can still remember looking through for the first time as an old film camera. And it was everything in my mind could become realized through that lens. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, I knew this is what I meant to do with my life. Mm -hmm. It's just how I see the world. The camera is a tool to be able to communicate that. And I've Mm -hmm. always lived and fantasies and fairy tales and I built the world around me in which I can live and be and have that and share that with other people who are like-minded. That's amazing. Oh, good. It's amazing. I think there are so many lessons in that. You know, you seized an idea. It's kind of an overwhelming concept, and Mm. you went with it. Right. You didn't reject it. You went with it. Right. You know, I didn't let anyone say, you can't do that. Can't do that. Or that's weird. Or it's impossible. Mm. Or You don't think like that. So why a book in particular, though? Because I've done it, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. (laughs) Work. Yes, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I didn't know that at the time. It is like having a baby, we will say. Book baby, it's it's a true thing. Mm -hmm. I'm on social media, and I have this incredible community. Mm -hmm. I had this list of questions people ask me all the time, and so this was a very easy way to address that. Mm -hmm. Why did I move to France? How did I actually do it? What is the visa process like? Mm -hmm. I just answered all these questions, and it kind of helped formulate the book. So with SCAD Lacoste, you know, of course, I get to welcome hundreds of students, and we actually have our largest enrollment here this quarter ever. But I'm wondering, if you were a student here, what would you want to study? I'd have come and spoken to your photography classes here, and the students are just wonderful. They're so creative. So, I mean, that's what I would do, because this is literally called the land of light. It's yes. a dream for a photographer. Yes. Photography was invented in France. Like yes. The history is so rich. Mm-hmm. And here you have endless amounts of inspiration. Mm-hmm. The colors, the seasons, <laughs> the light, everything is always changing and moving. And 
it's just a playland for a photographer. There's ceramicists and there's jewelry makers and there's a lot of creative people here in France and especially Provence has a really rich history with artists and yes. painters and stuff like that. So it's not just visual, like it gets into everybody's work no matter what you're doing when you're here. So I think it's a really enriching experience for any type of visual storyteller or visual creator, even if it's not like a representation of what the land is, it mm -hmm. can still adapt and affect your work. You it know? does, just the space people arrive and just like spread out their arms. Oh, yeah, the space. And the air, the like, air. Yeah, the light, just, everything, yeah. Everything. yeah. One major aspect of your career has been your sponsorship clients, that you're both a photographer and an influencer. How did these begin for you? I'm thinking about some of our students and their aspirations, and what do they teach you about the business side of creativity? When I graduated college, my degree in photography, it was when the world was transitioning into digital. So I was working for some other photographers, and then microblogging started. So if you can imagine a world before Instagram, it's kind of hard to imagine. We were all on Tumblr. At the time, my boyfriend who's now my husband's like, why don't you take that film archive, taking up space in the closet and put it on a Tumblr? And I was like, okay, why not? And it started to be a way I could meet people. And then I realized people were hiring me as a photographer because of my Tumblr. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they, this is a way for them to see that I'm out here. They I like take the pictures. Vision. They like the pictures, mm -hmm. so can I come shoot? for their magazine or their lookbook. So that's kind of how I started first marketing myself as a photographer. Mm -hmm. Then Instagram came along. I started doing Instagram and Twitter and all the usual stuff we do now. And I had, there was a new agency called Digital Brand Architects, which was the first agency to ever represent digital creators. That's when I started working with commercial clients in the social media realm. And when COVID happened and I transitioned from being a commercial photographer into doing art photography, now I use it as a tool to make things and sell my work. Mm -hmm. So when I have an exhibition, I don't just leave it up to the gallery or the of space I'm having the exhibition at to sell the work. I put it on my Instagram. It's marketing for myself for people to know what I have available and to buy and support the art of things they love. We're looking forward to your next book, Flowers of Provence. So what has led to this second book? I know you have a beautiful garden. You have an affinity for flowers. I'm in my flower era Okay. Right <laughs> I do an introduction of gardens here, flowers here, a little bit of the history, my relationship with all of it. But really, it's about the relationships with all the people. So mm -hmm. in vineyards, there's balance. When you see flowers, it's part of a story of a place, right? Mm -hmm. So so if you walk through a vineyard and you see all of the uh, wild arugula, that means it's an organic vineyard. That's how they put the nitrogen back into the soil. So these flowers are telling stories. So we go and we visit all these different, from vineyard owners to private gardens and um, new landscape artists who are trying to work environmentally with indigenous plants for the changing climate and how that looks in Provence. And I photograph all these different places and I try to tell the story of the land here. And then I also do some still lives in my studio where I create with the flowers of Provence. And then we have, and nobody knows this until now, there's two tutorials in there. So a little introduction, a couple of tutorials, and then it, the rest is like 300 pages of flower photographs. Beautiful photographs. Yes. Okay, just for fun, let's compare our Lubron must-have, must-visit places and favorites. I love going to Il Sol Sor for antiquing. We go every Sunday. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of my top choice or recommendation to people. Where do you like to go? What do you like to do? So we love Il Sol Sor on Sunday and we do our shopping. And then I love to go to Gord. Actually, I saw you, remember when we went to La Tigre yes. in the summer from yes. Gord, because the view yes. from there, That's a lovely sunset place. view is mm -hmm. just fabulous. I love that. Mm -hmm. Saturday is the market in Amt which has been around since the Middle Ages. That's the it's oldest amazing. one, right? The oldest one. It's protected as a like National Treasure of France. There's a hundred markets around And you're France. right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's outside my front door. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, what else do I love? You know, a lot of your photographers, the ones that I meet when I come here or they meet me at the market and out, yeah. every now and then they send me messages on Instagram after their time at SCAD. And like, that was one of the most special times in my life. 
Always. Like it really, it really changes people. Always. Yeah. yeah. I write about the colors of Provence and how it's like a symphony. And every, every, it is. Every player has its moment. Mm -hmm. You know, right now with all the white flowers and yeah. the white flowers give away to the purple flowers when the wisteria <laughs> comes mm -hmm. and, and the lilacs come and then they give away to the red poppies and then the, here come the sunflowers and then you come the lavender. <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, I love how the landscape is just like brush strokes, right? It's, it's red this week and it's blue that week. Beautiful. And yellow that All week. All seasons of yeah, the year. It's it beautiful. is. Congratulations on your new book, An American in Provence, and also on the upcoming book about flowers. The Flowers of Provence. The Flowers of Simple. Provence. Exactly. Perfect, perfect. Exactly. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Thank you for sharing your life with so many people so generously and for being my friend all these years. I know. We've had a long, wonderful friendship, and I really appreciate yes. the support you yes. always give. Love you. Love, yeah, you. love you. Biggest you fan. I'm your biggest fan. I know. You're always so wonderfully supportive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Ha <laughs>